What's up YouTube? This video we're discussing moment frames. By the end of this video, you'll know what a moment frame is, what materials you can use, when to use a moment frame, and most importantly, at the end, I'll show you how to do your own hand calcs in under five minutes to verify your designs. This is super important stuff, whether you're preparing to sit the Ice D exam, you're just doing your own preliminary design, or you're verifying uh, your analysis models. So what is a moment frame? Essentially, it's, uh, it's a lateral stability system. If we think of the three main lateral stability systems and buildings, we've got shear walls, which is a previous video. We've got uh, moment frames, which I'm about to discuss now. And uh, a future video will be braced systems. So yeah, a moment frame is a lateral stability system where the lateral, it, it depends on the, uh, the moment in between a beam and a column. That's essentially what provides the rigidity of a structure in the lateral direction. Okay, so what materials can we use in a moment frame? Uh, luckily, we can pretty much use all the primary uh, building materials, that being uh, concrete, steel, and timber. Uh, you can, yeah, create fixed joints between the, the beams and columns and have moment frames for, yeah, all three of those materials. So when should you use a moment frame? Uh, essentially, they come in really handy when you want unobstructed areas. So you'll see them pretty often in sort of like sporting facilities, um, or large warehouses where, yeah, there's you can't have bracing through a, a basketball court. Um, if you're sitting the Ice D exam, you often get prompted. So here's a, a client requirement where they, they really spell it out to you and they're saying there's no bracing or shear walls are permitted around the cores, which is um, cores are pretty typical spots to put shear walls. So if there's a client requirement that's sort of like, you know, restricting what lateral stability systems you can use. Um, you've got what the moment resisting frame as a, a suitable lateral stability system. That's why it's important to, to know how to use it. Um, some things to think about when not to use them. Moment frames are also called sway frames because they are, yeah, they are inherently less stiff than uh, shear walls or brace systems. So what that means is you get these second order effects. As you can see on this sketch here, when your frame uh, deflects across from the lateral load. It deflects more than than the other lateral stability systems comparatively because it is less stiff. And then as the the frame deflects, you get additional uh, second order uh, moments. So it's just something to think about in terms of maybe um, when not to use moment frames or when to be careful. Uh, so there's a sort of like general rule of thumb like buildings over four stories high uh, it's probably not suitable because you'll get really large second order effects which will penalize your members okay so how do you actually design a moment frame we can see in plan here uh, this could be a reinforced concrete moment frame and we take a section and all moment frames are essentially analyzed in a vertical 2d plane that's yeah so you can see here, I've just sketched the, the beams and columns for a, uh, a three-story building. Then after that, we've got to apply our lateral lows. I've just assumed for argument's sake, we've got 10 kilonewtons uh, laterally at each floor. Uh, if you want to figure out, these lateral loads are typically wind or seismic loads. So after we've put in our lateral loads, we need to make an assumption because there are the structure is statically indeterminate. So um, summing forces in the each of the you know vertical lateral and the sum of moments about a point to be zero, you won't be able to actually figure out the reactions. So an assumption and which is what makes this uh, analysis method somewhat approximate is we assume where all those dots are, they're hinges and they're points of zero moment. And we need to do that to make the, the structure so we can calculate it based on equations of equilibrium. So you can see with a sketch on the left-hand side, the midpoint of the beams and columns, the moment is zero. And that's what we're using, that assumption to essentially yeah, work out what the moments in our beams and columns of each of the joints are. Now, one thing that um, it somewhat threw me a little bit, but something to be uh, aware of, unlike say uh, vertical, uh, load pass where your moments between the uh, if it's a fixed connection between the beam and the column 
are typically the same if you've got the same load and span with a moment frame because the shear is traveling down through the column and you are, you don't see it in a lot of textbooks. It doesn't really jump out, but the, the moment in the beam column joints is increasing as you go down the building. So that's really important when you're designing a moment frame because they're not all the same uh, moments between the beams and columns. It, it increases as you go down. So the critical joint is gonna be the joint just above the ground floor because that's where the most moment is. As I mentioned before, the shear increases in the column as it uh, collects those lateral loads and it needs to be resolved and it eventually gets resolved in the foundation. All loads need to make it down to the foundation, which is why the shear is increasing. And that's why the, the critical joint is going to be the one that's just above the ground floor. And that's one I've circled here. Another assumption that we make is all the beams and columns have similar stiffness, which is why they the interior columns will take uh, the same amount of shear and the perimeter columns having sort of like half the tributary area, if you will, take half that, half the shear of an interior column. So the first step that we do, you can see on the bottom right hand here, is we work out the shear in a column. So we need to work out the total shear above and below the joint. So uh, it's pretty simple. I've just got 20 kilonewtons above the joint in the whole uh, frame there and 30 kilonewtons below. Now, we have three columns, so to work out the, the total shear in the interior column, which is going to be twice that of the uh, perimeter columns, is uh, we go 3 minus 1 is 2, 20 divided by 2 is 10, 30 divided by 2 is 15. So that's what the internal shear is above and below that joint in the uh, internal column. And then essentially it'll be half of that. So you can imagine uh, above the joint on the uh, exterior columns, you'll have five kilonewton shear. So you go 10 plus five plus five, that's how you get to, to 20. And then the same uh, process for the, the bottom, there'll be seven and a half kilonewton shear on below the joint in the exterior columns. So that's essentially the first step. We work out the shear on the internal columns in the critical joint. So the next step, now we've got the shear on the columns, we need to work out the shear in the uh, the beams. So to do this, we actually need to sum the moments and make sure they all equal zero. So we actually need some dimensions to sum moments. I've assumed uh, that the, these numbers are all two meters. So assume the, the, length, the total length of a beam is four and the total length of a column in between the, the uh, stories is four meters as well, because remember, these dots are sort of mid-span of the columns and the beams. So you can see in some basic algebra on the, the left-hand side here, to sum up the moments, make sure they all equal zero, the equal and opposite. You can see that the, the 10 and the 15 are pushing the column like that, and the, uh, the beams will need to resist it by uh, an equal and opposite moment in the other direction. So that's how we work out F is 12 and a half kilonewton meters at that point. And then from that, I can work out the uh, bending moments in the, the beams and columns in the joint. Um, and they should sum to zero. So you can see the the, the max moment will be at the, the bottom side of the, of the column. And the beams should be, or I mean, it all depends on what the dimensions are, but I've got equal dimensions here just for simplicity. So you can see here that the <clears throat> that should sum to zero when you work out all the, the sign conventions. So yeah, you can see that the column adds to 50, the, the moment in the beams add to 50. So that's essentially how we work out the, the critical moment in a moment frame in the, the beams and columns. So now we just need to go and design uh, we'll check, depending on what material we're using, what sections, etc., what the uh, our columns and beams can take in bending. Um, so I, on the right-hand side is just like we're just looking at one joint. Uh, on the left-hand side is the whole system. And as I mentioned before, a lot of textbooks don't really show it, but that moment is uh, getting higher as you go down each beam column joint down the building. So it's important that we, we pick... Uh, a an interior one because <clears throat> they take more shear and also the one just above the the ground because that's where yeah the the most shear and hence the most moment is and in this example here we'll be checking our column for 30 kilonewton meters bending and we'll be checking our beam for 25 kilonewton meters 
So you also might be thinking, well, hang on, there's also vertical loads, like, you know, we'll have a, um, a compression on the right hand side in our column and a tension on the left hand side, as well as we're assuming here, if you're um, paying attention that the the beams need to take compression to get that uh, lateral load that's applied onto the building into the columns. That is all true, but for the purpose of actually just looking, again, this is just like we're just checking um, uh, a moment frame. Uh, the literature pretty much just says that the, the axial forces are usually minor in compared to what you get from a vertical load case. So like in the preliminary stage, you, you can more or less ignore it. And the same for the, the lateral loads, like putting your sort of like beams into compression. So that can be ignored. So I think, you know, if you're sitting in the ISHRAC D exam, um, you could just state this assumption in a small text um, and you don't really need to go to the nth degree in doing sort of like combined actions when you're just checking uh, a stability system. It, it's fine just to work out the, get the lateral loads in your moment frame, find the critical joint, work out what those moments are and check your member for that particular moment alone. So that's it for this. If you found that helpful, um, please subscribe, give us a like. Uh, if you've got any questions or you disagree with anything, comment. Uh, these are two textbooks that I found quite helpful in sort of like wrapping my head around how to do some hand calcs on um, moment frames. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend um, buying these resources if you want to uh, learn more. Thanks.